Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Fell, and welcome to uh, the Ma Open House. Um, and this is actually uh, the reason why I'm using a microphone, and you're probably wondering why it's not uh, projecting out there. Uh, we're really speaking to our online audience that are virtually, that are connecting with us, that maybe didn't come tonight. Um, but my name is Michael Fell. I'm one of the art teachers here. I teach um, Art 3-4, Advanced Art, AP Art, Photography, and I also do the yearbook. And with you or with us here today are some students uh, as well as some uh, other fellow staff members. And I'll just pass the microphone down the line. But we're really here to hear from you if you have some questions regarding Ma, how it works, anything that you are wondering about, that is what this panel is all about. It's really a Q&A uh, that we can hopefully answer your questions. So I'll pass this microphone down to my right, and then we'll pass it down to the left, and everybody will introduce themselves. And here we are. Welcome. Hi, I'm Kai. I have been in Ma for four years, and I'm a senior. Hello, my name is Max. I'm a junior here at Ma. I've done Ma for three years, and I'm a performing arts student. Hi, my name is Liv. I'm a senior here at Ma. I've been in Ma all four years, and I'm a photography and yearbook student. Hi, my name is Nathan Christ. I am a Ma alumni, class of 2009, and I'm also currently our Aspire coordinator here at MHS and Ma. I have my degrees in uh, community engagement, theater arts, and currently pursuing my master's degree in teaching to hopefully be a drama teacher. So uh, with that, I think that what would be really nice is for you to maybe hear a little bit from uh, the students who are here uh, as they are currently students and they have been here either for three or four years. Uh, and they can give you a little bit about the Ma experience, and then we'll open it up to you, and you can ask some questions. So um, is there anyone who would like to start? Here we go. This is Liv. Hi. So I've really enjoyed the Ma experience. Um, there's a capacity to how many students can be in Ma. There's a 100-person capacity for each grade level. So the community is definitely really close. Um, at least for freshman year, you kind of stay with the same group of people for most of your classes. So you really get to know all of those people. And it's just a really nice, it's definitely more community based rather than just like going to classes and doing your work. Like you really get to feel like you get inspiration from everyone here. Um, sometimes I just like go into the art building and look around just to get like artistic inspiration from like other students or like walk around our art class. Um, it's just a very like nice and interconnected like community and um, I really enjoyed it. I'm an art student and I have been taking art for three years. I didn't do it freshman year because of something, I don't remember. But um, I'm in AP art now and our teacher, Fell, he like integrates all of, a lot of like different types of art in all of the years of art you take. Um, there was a unit where we did like graffiti like we use spray paint and stuff like that and like um, stencils, which was very fun. And then we have, sometimes we um, display the art in this hallway so people in MHS can see it too. So they know like that we are a part of this building, although you don't really see us like separated. Um, I am so grateful for the community that Ma provides. Uh, I'm so lucky to have friends who are artistically focused and like-minded and I think coming here it was just like a warm welcome in that we were all kind of here to do art and have fun and um, I think that was just a big plus for me. Uh, theater wise we do a lot of shows and so uh, there's a lot of opportunity for that and um, yeah I just think the community is great. That's it. <laughs> and just to piggyback on what Kai was saying uh, regarding uh, being in um, two different schools. So as you know, Ma is a charter school within 
a comprehensive high school in Milwaukee High. So there are approximately 1,300 students in uh, both schools combined, and 400 or so are in Ma. Um, and um, maybe some of the questions that you might have, but for instance, for my classes in art, all of my classes are actually blended. So if I have 35 students in my art class, maybe 20 of them are going to be Ma students, and the other 15 are Milwaukee High students. So Milwaukee High students have access to all of the electives, the arts that we're uh, obviously offering. Um, but that's kind of how that works. Um, and I'll maybe uh, let Nathan talk a little bit about uh, the freshman year uh, that Liv had hinted at, where as freshmen, you move around um, all together and you have very specific uh, freshman classes, including what is called Arts Lab. And then from there, I think the best thing would probably be to open it up to you all and get some questions hopefully answered. So the freshman experience with Ma. Um, I might come from a different generation of Ma students, but the one thing that I think you've heard from the panel so far that is a through line for this, uh, for this charter school is the community aspect. And I think from the freshman year for these students, the first thing that gets cemented is community. And it's very helpful, especially for a freshman, maybe coming from out of our district or from maybe a homeschool experience or something like that, to really create that, that home feeling for your student in order to solidify the education that's happening in this place. Freshman year of Ma was foundational for me as an alumni. And I think that one of the reasons is because you get such a taste of the arts your first year at Milwaukee Academy of the Arts. You get rotated through all of these different types of arts. It's not just um, you know, the visual art that a lot of us are used to, perhaps in a museum or a studio, but also performing arts, not only um, theater, but uh, band, orchestra, all of these options are available to your student the moment that they step on campus. And it's really important. Forecasting will be coming up soon. So take advantage of those forecasting periods to speak with a counselor and see where your student might be leaning towards when it comes to their artistic passions. I, I will always speak highly of my freshman year. It, the, the arts lab experience truly back when I was in school, was formational. I started out um, eight years playing violin, and um, throughout my time in Ma, I realized that my passion for violin was always something that I was going to value, but I learned quickly that my real passion was just for performing in general, and so I was able to get into our school's A Choir and join our thespian organization for young actors, and that changed my trajectory, and now I'm planning on becoming a drama teacher in the public school system. So Fantastic. Um, are there, I'd like to open it up. Are there any questions that you all have in your mind uh, that you came here specifically to maybe ask that we can hopefully answer for you? I'd like to open the floor up to you all. Yeah. So what would like a daily schedule look like at Ma versus at the regular high school? Like, is there a big difference or is it pretty similar? Or? <coughs> Um, I'm going to pass that on to a student because I think that they are probably uh, definitely the best ones to answer on that, and they are our greatest ambassadors. So would one of you all live for, yeah, Kai? Okay. Um, freshman year, when I was going through the whole um, applying process, I looked through the entire booklet, and I saw some classes that I liked, especially electives. Electives take up... How many periods? Three? Yeah. Three periods of your day. And you usually, uh, you have um, four periods a day and eight periods in total. So um, those electives are really like integrated to um, like connect you with the entire school and just not mall. But um, you do have that arts lab, that first period. 
which is very different from regular classes in regular high schools. That one arts lab class that is the entire semester of freshman year. But it does get you to connect to your class and all the people in your class um, in Ma. So you do have to take all your core classes. Um, as a freshman, all of your core classes are MAW classes, so they're completely MAW. Um, once you get higher up, like um, I'm currently in pre-calculus, and that's a mixed class. So, you know, for certain uh, higher level math classes, um, you know, it may be mixed. And for other certain core classes as you go on. But for freshman year, all of your classes are mainly MAW. Um, electives are mixed. Um, so, yeah. And I think um, it's it's good to kind of picture that we run on a A day, B day, or day one, day two system. So there are eight classes. Uh, so today was a day one. So we had periods one, two, three, and four, the students had. And then that means tomorrow they'll have periods five, six, seven, and eight, which means Monday they'll have day one or A day, periods one, two, and three, uh, and four. Um, so as uh, the student said, you will have your core classes as a freshman, and those core classes would be taught by Ma specific teachers, and you would be in uh, probably surrounded by all Ma freshmen. And the time uh, that you are in blended classrooms would be in your PE class, your art classes, your band class, your drama class. Um, but the art classes do, by and large, tend to uh, be, like I said, roughly approximately 20 to 15 if I had 35. In my advanced and AP art class, I think almost everybody is in Ma. There's a few, uh, maybe there's one or two, but there's almost everybody is in Ma. So it starts to kind of filter out. And I wanted to go to the back there because there was a question real quick. Yeah, hey, um, thanks all for being here. Uh, I just have a question Yes, we have uh, four counselors, and those counselors work with age groups. So we have a freshman counselor, a sophomore counselor, junior counselor, and senior counselor, and then they follow uh, that age group. So the current senior counselor will, will become the freshman counselor next year, and then we'll follow them through the four years. And they will work with them to build that schedule. They will know what is uh, totally required. You have to take these classes. Now you have some openings. What is it that you would like to do? Are you a drawer and painter? Do you want to do digital photography? Do you want to do drama, band, singing? Um, so you have a variety of different options there where you can uh, kind of pull from. And Kai wanted to say something. Um, in my high school experience in Ma, okay, okay, in my high school experience in Ma, I got to be able to, freshman year, I took stagecraft, which is in the theater program, and then I got three years of art, and I got photography, and throughout that, I got more, like, painting, drawing, charcoal, all of that stuff, like, mixed media, so, like, all of that is really based on what you want to do and what classes you want to take. So, um, Also, counselors are really willing to uh, work with you to get all the classes that you want. Um, I know I've talked to my counselor a lot throughout my three years here to make sure that I'm getting in all of the arts classes that I want. Uh, last year, I was in three different arts-focused classes, um, and so... They really put in the work to make sure that you're getting everything out of the experience that you can. And circling back to the last question, in um, Ma English classes, we focus more on doing like artistic English, like poetry and stuff like that, more than writing essays, like long, really like drawn out essays and stuff like that. So it's like more of an artistic class than it is like normal um high school English classes. And uh, you've probably heard us say Arts Lab a few times. Arts Lab is a class that the freshmen 
uh, will all do. And there's three teachers, so they divide them up into roughly 33 per class. And uh, the Arts Lab is a required class for the freshmen, uh, and it has an emphasis on making, pre uh, presenting, and identity, which is somewhat different than the mock core classes. Um, and it uses arts integration strategies uh, just to help uh, with those students. Um, and it's, as Nathan said, it is uh, foundational and uh, clearly something that you felt was uh, hugely beneficial. Um, and so all freshman students will have that particular class. And then, like we were saying, they would move uh, into a Ma history class after that period or a Ma English class. Maybe they would go and have PE. Then they'd come over and they would have art. Within the arts, uh, I can speak specifically within the arts. We have a vertical system in art, and uh, the arts start off with Art 1-2, which is an introduction to art. Uh, then students can move up to Art 3-4, which is intermediate art, and then they can move into advanced and AP art. Um, and when students get into advanced and AP art, uh, my curriculum is aligned with Clackamas Community College, and they can walk out with 12 college credits, actual college credits, uh, not from us, but from CCC. And it's the same in photography. Um, students can take digital photography one, then they can move into photo two, and then at advanced photo, uh, they can get three college credits. So I have some students, uh, in fact, Kai, um, and I believe you will too, Liv, uh, will walk out with 15 college credits, uh, which is pretty amazing. And I have a uh, son who's currently a senior in college, and I can tell you that I wish uh, that he graduated with 15 college credits because it would save me a lot of money. Um, so that's a pretty uh, wonderful and powerful uh, thing that we're also able to offer. Um, and then, of course, there's the AP college credit, um, which also is available. So, Nathan. And just to make more comment on the uh, college credit bearing opportunities that are available to MA students, because MA and MHS are a joint venture, essentially, for students, MA students are afforded all of the same AP and college bearing credit classes that the high school students are. So, your student can take a calculus class and get AP credit. They can take other credit-bearing courses. Um, I, I don't know if the, the Ma Poets and Playwrights class is still CCC, but there, were, there are other options for your student to take classes that they can gain credits in for college and graduate high school, essentially completing a, a, a chunk of college credits. Do any of the students on the panel, any of you, have experience with the Schellenberg <coughs> classes mm. in campus? No, actually. Um, <laughs> um, I do have a lot of friends who have experience with Schellenberg. So um, there's uh, so many different courses that you can take. Um, culinary, there's stuff for um, becoming like a cop, becoming a firefighter, mm. um, cosmetology. Uh, digital design, Broadcast. broadcasting, broadcast. journalism, uh, business and management. There's a teaching course also, uh, welding, um, many, many different courses. And how that works is there's a couple different buses that line up between our periods. And there's a Sabin bus and a Schellenberg bus. And depending on uh, what campus that your class is at, you just go ahead and follow it there. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, everything that is offered to the high school students is also offered uh, to the mall students, and that includes sports. So if any, um, if any of you were interested in playing sports, uh, you can definitely also do that. And we do get students uh, who come from smaller schools and they want that bigger school experience, but at the same time, they want that more arts integration. So they stay within Ma, but then they might play soccer for Milwaukee High School. Um, so we do offer all of that, which is fantastic. Are there any other questions out there? Yes. Uh, I'd love to hear more from the students about um kind of what it's like to be 
uh, mixed student with the Milwaukee High students? What that culture is like? Are there any barriers? Or, yeah. yeah. The barriers are really interesting between the students. Um, it's not a bad thing at all. It's more of just like interests, really. So like you can kind of tell like in your classes, like in like our mixed classes, I can tell like who has more interest in certain subjects. Um, but it really isn't a problem, though. Uh, currently in government and that's a mixed class um, and that class is going fine. There's not like it's not like you walk around the halls, people are like, oh, you're a Ma student. Like, it's not like you just walk around the halls like any other student, and there's not really a problem with that sort of integration at all. And if you are one of those Ma students, because of those, like, integrated classes in the beginning of your uh, school experience, you do know who is in your class and who is, like, upperclassmen in, your, in the Ma class. So it's really nice to be able to know those kind of people who have the similar interests in you. That's a great question, and it's one that gets asked a lot because of the two schools. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing that I can definitely say with uh, the two students on either side of me, they're currently my editors-in-chief uh, in yearbook, and so they – you know, they run the show, you know, I might be the CEO, you know, the advisor, uh, but they run the show and they're, they're telling their other students, their staff, they're getting them to do things. And, uh, that's a blended class. So they're working with Milwaukee high students as well as ma. And in fact, this particular class might be more Milwaukee high. So, um, and also the, the mix of students spreads to after school activities as well. So uh, I'm a part of our thespian society at the school. I'm the vice president this year. And that club is definitely a mix of students from both schools. And we try to keep it that way because art should be accessible for all students in the school. But it hasn't become an issue in that club because we're all there for the same reason. And uh, I think as long as you approach things from a lens of respect, then we can keep civil and remain friends and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, I would say there's definitely a strong sense of community within the mall community, but we tend to branch, branch outwards as well. And that brings us to the clubs. We do have multiple clubs uh, that are offered after school, uh, and they can range from uh, film club, there's chess club, there's math club, and we also have some affinity clubs. Uh, we have a black student union, we have uh, Ascension, which is our Latinx student union, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander student union, and we also have a queer student union. Uh, so there's some uh, affinity groups as well, uh, which pull people in, which is fantastic. So on that note, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I heard a little bit about the um, approach to English as like, through a creative focus, but I'm curious what is offered around creative writing? We do have a creative writing class. And in fact, there's uh, two levels of creative writing because it's so popular. So we have a creative writing one and a creative writing two. And I know uh, that one of my uh, art students just shared with me their essay that they wrote that they just submitted to uh, Scholastic's Art and Writing Awards. And they submitted their writing and it came from their creative writing class. So we do have two specific creative writing classes and a vertical system to get higher up. Yes. And the teacher for those classes is wonderful, and they're actually here tonight, so if you go on a tour, you'll walk through their classroom and get to hear from them a little bit, if you want to hear more about that. I actually took creative writing in freshman year, and I applied one of my poems, and I did, I think I got honorable mention on the Scholastics thing, but she encouraged me to apply, and I got, like, acknowledgement for it. Also, if early graduation, like either a half semester or whatnot, is a part of your plan or like maybe something you want to do, creative writing does give you an English credit, so that can also help towards your graduation. 
I uh, stumbled upon creative writing in Ma when I failed my freshman Spanish class, which is also an option <laughs> if, uh, if you don't do great in your first semester of Spanish class. And I took creative writing all four years of high school. My creative writing teacher was a genius. And she encouraged me to write, and I got published in a book. So there's all sorts of great options. I think that Ma Creative Writing is maybe one of the highlights of our school. So I encourage your student to take it. Uh, just a question. Is, are the level one courses always a prerequisite? For instance, if we're coming from Da Vinci, and there's a lot of exposure to similar like, um, Yes, but there's also flexibility. And I say that there's flexibility because, for instance, uh, I just met uh, with a uh, student in Art 1-2, and they are a freshman, and they showed me their work, and second semester, they're moving into my Art 3-4 class. And last year, I did the same thing with a student. They did the first semester of Art 1-2. They met with me. They showed me their portfolio, and I moved her into Art 3-4. She's now currently in Advanced Art, and... Um, definitely going to be taking it even higher at that stage. But yes. And then the part two of that, if there are like more popular focuses, is it sometimes harder for freshmen to get some of the electives they want? Or is that? Um, I'll let w students uh, answer that one. Yeah, I think that's better for them. So Miss Barrett is currently our counselor. So if you do end up enrolling in Ma, she will also be your counselor. Um, she is wonderful with flexibility, but um, I've had a couple conversations with her about like schedules for, you know, next semester or whatnot. And seniors and upperclassmen do get um, higher on the list for certain electives since their time in school is running shorter. So sometimes freshmen are a little lower on the list. But as you go through Ma, you will get higher on that list. But um, like Fell said, there is always flexibility. Um, in freshman year, you're, uh, you have to be a sophomore to take photography, but I had to block in my class or I had a block in my schedule where I didn't have a class and I needed one. And I was like, oh, photography is interesting. So Ms. Barrett emailed Mr. Fell and was like, hey, can the student, you know, try out your class? He said, sure. And now I've been in photography for four years straight. I'm currently in AP studio art and I'm going to submit a portfolio in May. So there's always flexibility for that kind of stuff. And Miss Barrett is wonderful, super personable. I love her. <laughs> She's lovely. Um, my freshman year, I wanted to get into art one, two. I didn't get into it. But my sophomore year, I talked to, I think, Barrett. And she got me into art three, four my junior year. And then um, that next semester, I took Art 3-4 and Advanced Art. And then this year, I'm taking AP Art. So there's always um, availability to get into that in the later year of your high school experience. And do we have any more questions? Uh, yes. Right there. My turn for you guys from North as far as, is there any differentiation in levels when you start freshman year in math or English or language? Is there any pre-testing or any sort of? Um, here, Max. Yeah. So I took advanced math in middle school, so I started in geometry freshman year. So there's definitely, if you email with your counselor or talk to them before schedules come out when you're forecasting, you can get those things figured out to make sure you're in the right level. Um, I will say a downside of that is then you won't necessarily be in the Ma specific class because all the freshman core classes are going to be the Ma specific classes. So that's just... A give and take. Yes, I'll draw one. And my other question mm -hmm. is also, I might see the tour, but it's like, you guys have your own cafeteria, like hangout yeah. area, like is it yeah. specific or are you kind of in one, a few tables in a bigger cafeteria? Well, you can. Okay, um, so there's one common cafeteria. There's two different lunches every day. Uh, so we all eat together. There are specific places you can eat if you want somewhere else. Uh, the theater room is always open if that's a fun little place for you. Um, a lot of people, uh, well, we kind of use that time to integrate, so there's not a lot of separation, but if you need a specific place elsewhere where you want to specifically sit with art students, there's definitely places to do so. And also, I think that there's, you know, often teachers who have an open door policy 
Um, so, you know, these two, uh, pretty much every day one, they're having lunch in my room. Uh, I often have students in my room having lunch. Uh, so students find their place. And uh, if it's too uh, noisy, too loud down there, uh, too busy, um, students will find their place without a doubt. And they find their people and they eat and they hang out, um, which is great which is fantastic. Um, and another question, yeah. I have a question about the application and enrollment process. So you yeah. said there's about 100 students. So how competitive is it? How get in? Like, do you have a, how does it work to actually get into Vaughn? Uh, so March 15th, I do know is the deadline and the students will all apply. And uh, as far as I am aware, um, obviously, you know, we want everyone who applies to get in. And, uh, you know, we haven't thankfully been in that situation where we've had to deny people. Uh, and I don't think that we want to be in that situation where we have to deny people. Um, but uh, what I do know is this is a, probably the largest freshman class, the current freshman class, and the seats that we do have available are in the higher level, and the idea is that we would love to be able to have, you know, that full, uh, um, you know, 100 throughout. But I think that, you know, some of that, if not all of it, is because we were in a pandemic year. Max is, you know, I can't even imagine. Max is a junior, so Ma Max's freshman year was all pretty much online for three semesters, uh, or sorry, three quarters. And um, so, you know, Max stayed on, uh, which is which is testament to the school. And um, I think that ultimately, um, that retention for the students is something that we really want to keep. Uh, without a doubt. Did you want to say something about that? Um, I work in the counseling office with our counselors and our, our team. Uh, and one of the things that I do know is that they do um, they do start off with applications from people that are within the North Clackamas School District first. Um, that's part of our, uh, our, our school district's policy. But once we have accepted all of the students that have applied for North Clackamas School District, um, we are almost 100% acceptance rate for everybody out of district that applies as well. So I don't want to say uh, don't be competitive with your essay process because the essay process is so important. It's how we get to know your student. It creates kind of a profile for them, for us to kind of um, see where their talent is and where their educational needs are. But um, but we have close to 100% acceptance rate for all of out, outside North Clackamas students. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, I think we're going to get started. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good evening and welcome to Milwaukee Academy of the Arts. Uh, this is a Q&A session um, where you can ask us, this panel of both teachers as well as students, uh, some of your questions that you might have and hopefully we will be able to answer all of them and you'll leave here with a lot more knowledge about the school that we would love to see uh, your students at next year. So. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves. My name is Michael Fell, and I am one of the art teachers. Uh, I teach uh, at Art 34, Advanced Art, AP Art, uh, Photography, and I also do the yearbook. Hi, my name's Liv. I'm a senior here at Ma. I've been in Ma all four years. I'm an AP Photography student and the one of the yearbook executive editors. Hi, my name is Savvy Ryan, uh, pronouns are they, them, and I am a MA alumni and also one of the visual arts teachers here. Um, I teach Art 1-2, which is Intro to Art, um, Art 3-4, which is the intermediate level, and then um, Media Arts, which is 3D Sculpture. I'm Kai, I am a senior, and I have taken four years, this is my fourth year of being in MA, I am a traditional artist, digital artist, photographer, and I am the other yearbook editor. Um, yeah. 
Hi everyone, my name is Max. I use they them pronouns. I'm a junior here at Ma. Um, I have taken three years of theater and I do choir and I have a lot of fun. <laughs> So again, welcome. The reason why we're passing a microphone around and you're wondering why you can't hear us a little bit louder is because we are filming, we are live. This is for our virtual audience so that they can hear us as we speak to you all. Um, so just let us know if uh, we need to speak up a little bit in the, uh, in the back if you can't hear us. So again, welcome to Milwaukee Academy of the Arts. Uh, as you know, this is a charter school within a comprehensive high school. Um, and that in itself might raise a few questions to you. Uh, so uh, Milwaukee Academy of the Arts is a school of uh, approximately 400 students, and Milwaukee High School is a school of approximately 800 um, students. So we have 1,200, give or take 1,300 students. Um, and um, if your students do come here next year as freshmen, they will be coming in as an incoming MA freshman, and all of their classes uh, will be MA related. And as they move around on their schedule, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but as they move around on their schedule, they might have some elective classes. For instance, my class, elective classes, arts, PE. Um, those classes are actually blended with their Milwaukee High uh, colleagues uh, and peers. So, um, for instance, my art class, I might have 35 students, and of those 35, 20 of those students are roughly MA students, and the other 15 are Milwaukee High. But your freshman student might then leave my class and go to their history class, which is all entirely MA freshman students. Um, so their core classes, they move around and they go to core classrooms, uh, with their MA freshman class, but then when they go into an art class, it's going to be a blended class. And that allows them the ability to be uh, circulating amongst a larger school. Some students come to us from uh, smaller schools and they really want that larger uh, school experience, um, but then it also allows them to also have this uh, rather interesting small school experience as well at the same time. Um, and on that note, uh, maybe I can, oh, we have some questions already. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go to the lady behind you, yeah. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that like their history class would be a mall specific class. How would you differentiate like a mall history class from a history class in the larger high school? Mm. Fantastic question. Uh, would one of the students like to take that? I had a wonderful Ma history class, <laughs> and uh, it's so much fun. We do some, like, simulations and more, like, hands-on activities. There's some, like, drawing that you're going to do. There's a lot more opportunity for you to express the historical stuff through your artistic lens. So, like, maybe you can write a song about this historical event or a little skit or present something to the class while uh, – showing an art piece uh we did all of those things uh and then we'll do fun little simulations where uh you'll get like a character and then you'll live within a historical context for a class so um the teachers who are teaching ma courses uh tend to be very aware of that and make sure that they're catering their classes to everyone's artistic needs and it creates uh, a wonderful experience for learning. I remember, uh, was it last year? I think it was last year. No, 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 it was the year before that, uh, my sophomore year, that we were online and I was taking Miss Fusen's um, English 10. And it was so fun, exactly like this, um, what Max described. There's more of a a uh, diverse way to be graded and to do things more than just like essays and stuff like that. I made a couple art pieces like describing what happened in a scene and stuff like that and that was really fun. So um, we focus more on arts during our assignments in English and stuff like in other classes like that 
So it's integrated in art. Yeah, and I think that that's the key word with the core classes is that there's a lot more arts integration within uh, what they're doing. Um, whereas in the Milwaukee High uh, equivalent class, it would be more of a traditional history class. So, question. Uh, yeah, I was just, just uh, drafting off of your description of this smaller school within a, a larger school. What type of dynamics does that create? Um, is there, a, within the student body community, does it feel like a kind of like us and them? Does it feel like it's all us? Would love a little bit of insight on uh, like just the overall dynamics between the schools. Yeah, sure. And that's a really popular question, uh, which was asked uh, last time as well. And I think that the students, again, uh, they are our best ambassadors because they are obviously walking through the halls with their student experience. And I think that they can definitely share that. Uh, but as a teacher, I will just say that um, first and foremost, we are a community, a big community, a Mustang community. And then within that, we do have our natural identities of uh, Ma with the arts integration and uh, Milwaukee High. But um, I certainly feel, and I've been teaching here for a handful of years, I have always felt that um, there is uh, no division between the two schools. Yes, there is a identity, but I have never felt that there is this like us and them thing. Um, I have always felt that, uh, by and large, that uh, there is so much that both schools can bring to each other. And so in my blended art classrooms, to have the Milwaukee High students working with the Ma students, I think that it has been uh, incredibly beneficial for both of those uh, schools of students. But I'll hand it over to uh, Liv. So within, since Ma is such a small school within such a larger school, it definitely does feel different because there's a hundred people in your class and for your entire freshman year, it's mostly one set of kids that you're with through that year. So it becomes a very tight knit group, but that just means that when you walk into like, let's say a blended class or you walk into the commons for lunch, it's more of just a new experience and an open experience. Um, you can just kind of see like everyone's like differences, right? And that's kind of what brings people together. So the only like harsh line of like, oh, like, you know, like something may feel different is just because it's not, they're not a part of like your tight knit community. But I've never not talked to someone in the hallways because they're an MHS student. No one's ever not talked to me because I'm a Ma student. Like they're still like all of, you know, there's classes that are blended, you know, it's not like you have different lunches or anything. Like it's still like the MHS mall community, but there's also a community within that community that's a lot more tight knit and close, but it's never like caused any trouble or anything. It's still a great school. Yeah, and I think everyone uh, eventually also finds, you know, their people within those schools. Did you want to say anything? Um, I like to think of Ma as like a very large friend group within a larger school. So like we all come in together and we're bonded together, but we also branch out and we see other people and we have classes with MHS students as well. Um, I am very grateful to for the community that Ma brings of like artistic like minded students who are just like um, can be naturally relate to each other. Um, but I think that there is also a lot that you can learn from being in classes from other, with other students from MHS. And branching off from the, like, separation, there's always the, like, connection. I know Max. Max is a junior. I'm a senior because we are in the mall class because we have classes together like that. So thank you. Uh, yes. In terms of electives, how many are there? <laughs> uh, there's a decent amount of electives. And um, not only are there a decent amount of electives that are offered here at this school, uh, but there's also access to the Sabin Schellenberg campus. And the Sabin Schellenberg campus is our vocational campus uh, that allows students to take classes off uh, 
they're bussed off to the Saban Schellenberg campuses. So in terms of uh, how many electives there are, there are many. Uh, just within the arts, we have Art 1, 2, we have Art 3, 4, we have Advanced Art, we have AP Art, Digital Photography 1, Digital Photography 2, Advanced Photography, all of the drama classes, mixed media, ceramics, all of the uh, choir classes, and all of the band classes. Uh, and those are just the arts electives. And then you throw in culinary, forestry, and a lot of the other vocational classes that are offered. Uh, students have access to a lot of different classes. And during my freshman year, uh, when I was in the office to um, apply and stuff like that, I got a huge packet with all the electives and all the core classes. I don't know if we still have that, but that's what I went through. I went through the entire book, and I just picked my electives from there. Thank you. Uh, we had a question here. Yeah. First is a yes or no question regarding the presentation that we had in the cafeteria. It appeared that the enrollment for the freshman class was about 100, and in each subsequent year it plumped. Did I read that correctly? That like yeah. the, like the senior year is much smaller than the... Yeah. So, so then my follow-up is, can you speak to that? Is that lack of enrollment in those years, or is that attrition? And if so, can we speak to what leads to that attrition? I think that that was an anomaly because, as you know, this building is brand new and there were a number of students when they knew that that uh, that the school was going to be torn down and we were on about 45 modular buildings on the football field they didn't want to uh, do that and that was during Liv and Kai's freshman year and they decided to stay on so thank you um, and then of course we had the pandemic and so we did lose some students to uh, the building of this a uh, beautiful school building that's all done, as well as the pandemic, without a doubt. However, our current freshman class is uh, packed. It's, yeah. yeah. It would have led to my question, if, if there is attrition, I, what, I, what I saw was, what I heard them say was that, that, that the charter limits to 400 enrolled students. So if the senior class is less than 100, does the freshman class get to be bigger? I'm guessing not. But. That I can't answer. I, I don't. I don't make those calls. Um, so yeah, that I can't answer. But uh, I do know that the charter is at four hundred, and my my guess is is that you know the hope is is that you know we keep all of the current freshmen as they move their way up, and we keep bringing in a hundred or so. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then kind of building off of that, is that also kind of the explanation for the rate of students set to graduate being in the 80s as opposed to the 90s? Yes, without a doubt. I would, uh, I, I would hands down, I don't want to, you know, put blame on, you know, things like buildings and pandemic, but without a doubt, it was, it was huge and it may, it had a big impact and you know we lost a lot of uh seniors at the time that didn't want to or juniors uh that didn't want to be seniors in a brand new building and modulars uh so you know it had a much bigger hit than we thought as did the pandemic uh which hit all schools so in previous years were your rates higher than yes in terms of graduation and such yeah. Okay. yeah very much so uh, I think we had one just back here, and then I'll come back. Yeah. Um, I was curious where this other campus is located, the Sabin Schellenberg. Yeah. So Sabin Schellenberg is located. Um, I think it's on. It's Alder Creek Way. It's out near Alder Creek. Uh, so they do. T it's yeah. It's about a 10, 15 minute drive um, on the Milwaukee Expressway. So if a student uh, has a Sabin Schellenberg class. They will take school buses that will bus them to those classes, and then they leave uh, 10 or 15 minutes early, and then the school bus buses them back here. So they're all back here in time for their next class if they have that. Some of those classes are uh, periods one and two, so they're like a full double period. Uh, others might just be the full just period one class. Um, but we offer that transportation. And those kids, if they take a Sabin Schellenberg class, they will be in a class with 
Rex Putnam students, Adrian Nelson students, and Clackham students. So those seats are kind of awarded, you know, if there's 30 seats available, then they'll give them out, you know, evenly. Uh, yes. I have a question just about the administration. I guess in my mind, I thought there would be like a mob building and like leadership, counseling, sort of like, um, so I'm just curious how they integrate, how you're integrated as staff and counselors and leadership of the school and how that works if, you know, student needs an IEP or are we using the, um, kind of the MHS channels for that or does MA have its own leadership counseling? So we don't have our own uh, counseling. We do have our own leadership. We do have uh, the director of MA, who you have met, uh, who is Miriam Higgins, who stood up and introduced herself probably in the comments to all of you. Um, she is one of our assistant principals and the director of MA. Counseling, we have counselors. We have four counselors, and they are divided by year group. So we have a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, and a senior. The current senior counselor will be the freshman counselor next year, and then they will work their way up over the course of the four years with that class. Um, and it's all very much the same. If a student uh, has an IEP or uh, a 504 plan, uh, all of that is no different than what our students at uh, MHS would have or any other public high school system. And that also will follow with them from the school. A lot of times it follows with them from the school. But if we do have students that uh, maybe need that extra support, uh, we then, as teachers, we can uh, obviously identify students and work with counseling and our um, special education department to help them with that support. But a lot of times students, uh, it follows them throughout middle school and comes into the high school. Okay, and but those those counselors are part of the MHS? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. so on their caseload, they'll have MA oh, and yeah, MHS. Okay. Yeah, Understood. exactly. Uh, and there was a question in the back, back yeah. there. Uh, do you have any data on turnover of teaching staff? Um, turnover of teaching staff. Uh, I do know that we've had a recent uh, big hire last year, um, simply because we had a handful of teachers uh, retire in the last uh, few years. And a lot of that is simply because of uh, age and generation. Um, so a lot of our older staff have retired in the last handful of years, which has made uh, for a very fresh face um, staff, which is fantastic. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, a lot of it is because uh, when I joined here, I've been teaching here uh, for a handful of years. And when I joined here, um, most of the staff were definitely on the older uh, end, and a lot of them have since retired. Yes. So back to um, your previous comment, that means that each counselor has about 500 students? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as high as that. Uh, we are between 12 and 1,300, so, um, you know, I would say, yeah, probably about uh, 400, yeah. Um, well, we're, there's about 300, yeah, about 300, because we have four counselors. And even though our counselors do have a lot of students, um, our current counselor, the seniors, will be the freshman counselor, Miss Barrett. She is a wonderful counselor. I remember one of the first times I made like a single appointment with her, like one-on-one. -on -one. I was in sophomore year. It was during the pandemic. It was over a phone call. And she called me, was asking some like small talk questions. I told her that like my grandpa was sick at the time. And a year and a half later when we were in school, she's like, oh, like how's your grandpa doing? You know, so like even though they do have so many students, like it's the little things that do count. And Miss Barrett um, is very flexible and will work with your needs and your wants and your goals for the future. And she's super personable. And so like even though they do have a lot of students, they are still so amazing at their job. And they stay throughout the year. So I've had Miss Barrett since freshman year. Um, Aguilar, who was down in the um, session that was just before this Q&A, uh, he's been a counselor here for 
quite some time, 20, 20 years. Um, Mr. Fell here, uh, he was also my teacher when I went here. And the teacher that I uh, took over for, Miss Mo, she was here her entire career. And I have every intention of staying as well. So I was an alumni, um, or I am an alumni. I was a student, and now this is my forever home. So I have every intention of staying, and I think it's a place where people come and want to stay working at. Uh, yeah, question. Uh, since we have a very um, integrated art program, um, is any of the art program applied arts, where the students actually apply their art and like go out to the community and really kind of uh, do art with businesses that or anything like applied art? Yeah, that's a great question, and uh, we have had that definitely uh, pre-pandemic, much more so. Uh, it's been a little bit harder uh, since we've come back uh, post-pandemic, um, but in the past we've had students that have worked uh, within the community uh, regarding the mural, for instance, on the side of the building. Um, I worked with the city of Milwaukee and uh, we and, and uh, Trima actually to get that uh, painted on the side of our music auditorium building. And we had students that were involved in the planning process, working with the artists that painted it. The students then came and they helped to block it all in, but they saw uh, some of the students even went to those meetings at City Hall, which was uh, really great. They got to see where the budget is, how we're able to get a painting. You don't just start throwing it up onto the wall, but they saw the entire process broken down, and we've had that. In the past, I've also had, I have some friends of mine who make artwork for Burning Man as well as other big festivals, and in fact, I just received a text from them just tonight uh, asking me, saying that they're unveiling their big sculpture outside of the Portland Art Museum, and they wanted to know if I had any students that would love to come down and help. Uh, so we definitely have all of these uh, abilities and feelers out there in the community, and students have taken advantage of that in the past. So going forward, there is an intention? Going forward, there's always that intention. Our biggest intention is we would love to have a greater, um, I think, relationship with uh, Dark Horse, which is right here, um, you know, right in our community. Uh, Dark Horse is a little bit harder. It's a little bit like our Willy Wonka. Uh, we're not sure what is happening behind those walls. I've been in there once, um, and it was uh, it was very hard for me just to be able to get inside there. They're very secretive because obviously all of the movie rights that they have uh, with their comic books they own. I think. Um, uh, uh, the rights for Star Wars and stuff like that. So they're, they're very secretive. Uh, we have had some artists come into this building and work with some students in the past, um, but that's a little bit harder, but that's something that we do want to crack, uh, hopefully that nut, and be able to get more uh, immediate access. We've had Leica uh, as well, and Leica have come in and they've brought in uh, some of their uh, actual puppets that they've worked on. I know that they came in with some Paranorman puppets and they've uh, did presentations with the students uh, with box trolls and stuff. So all of the above, yes, going forward, um, without a doubt. Uh, the last couple of years have definitely been an anomaly for everyone and trying to regain all of those relationships is definitely uh, something that we're all working on. So thank you. As an art student, this year um, there is a store downtown Milwaukee called Made in Milwaukee, and I sell my art there. You literally just have to go in and tell them that you want to sell your art. I brought in a bunch of my art, and then we did like samples, and I decide pricing and names. And every other, um, every first Sunday of the month, I go in and pick up my money, and it's super easy. So. I also, um, I work with all of like the intro art students and I'm constantly looking into local opportunities for them that they can take advantage of that I share with them about um, gallery opportunities or art shows. Um, we're just finishing up Scholastic right now, which is a national art 
um, contest. Um, so I think as art teachers, we're always trying to find those resources for our students to get involved with. And uh, we've recently met with one of the Milwaukee Arts Committee people um, for the city, and it's very much still in the planning phase, but talking about collaborating with a local artist to start a new mural in the city as well. So yeah, it's definitely always in the works and on our minds. I think just like what Val said, um, reconnecting those relationships is what we are working on. Um, in the back, is there another question? Yeah. Um, I was wondering about the, uh, you guys have a track team, and if so, what's that like? We do, and that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, so one of the beauties uh, with being in a school that is bigger and it's connected with the comprehensive high school, um, we have students that come here that uh, they can also play for uh, Milwaukee. So yes, we do have a track team, um, and we have students in Ma that come here and they do want to uh, be very involved with the arts, but they also want to play soccer or they want to play volleyball or they want to do track. And we have all of the um, sports. Uh, we have a football team, uh, several basketball teams, several soccer teams, uh, cross country, swimming, um, and track and field, baseball, softball, uh, wrestling. So yeah, we have all of the above. So, great question. About the track team, actually, we have a track star. His name is Logan Law, and he actually won a couple awards nationally. Nationally. So, we do have a strong track team. Um, yeah, so thank you. And that, that is a fantastic asset that the schools or that the students will be able to have access to. Um, so a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're getting just students that are interested in art. Yes, we are. Uh, but sometimes there are students that are interested in the arts that also enjoy sport. So any other questions? Uh, yes, back here. Um, yes, yeah, so culinary, did, have any of you taken it? We took it online. Okay. So... Sadly, I had to take culinary online, <laughs> which seems a little bit counterintuitive, but I have toured the Sabin Schellenberg building, and it is a uh, it is a really big kitchen. Um, I'm forgetting the word, but um, anyways, it's lovely. It um, Kebke is the head chef there. And even though, like, I was online, I did learn a lot <laughs> of stuff from him. Um, there's multiple different chefs. There's multiple different levels. Once you get high enough into the culinary class, like, once you get, I think, to culinary two or three, you actually do start doing catering. Um, so you are actually supplying food to people, and you're getting a real-world experience um, in the food business. Um, so just a little bit of information about that for you. And that's, um, it's, I would say it's probably one of, if not the most popular classes. Um, I have had many students, I teach yearbook, and just two years ago I had a student that I had handpicked as one of my editors, and she came to me and she goes, I'm really, really sorry, Mr. Fell, but unfortunately it clashes with advanced culinary. And I said, you know, Eden, it's okay. You have to do you. You're not going to hurt my feelings. This is more important. And so, yeah, um, we do have that vertical system within culinary, and I know that students absolutely love it. Uh, it's very, very popular. But that's one of the classes that they would be bussed off to at Saban Schellenberg. Uh, was there a question up here? Uh, yeah. Is there a student council at the school? Mm -hmm. There is a student council at the school, yes. And uh, we have a student government class, and the student government class put on and uh, organize all of the assemblies. Uh, we have a national honor society. We have multiple clubs at the school. The clubs at the school can range from uh, I teach a film club. Uh, I know that there's other clubs uh, with respects to math club. Um, we have affinity clubs. We have uh, Ascension, which is our Latinx club. Uh, we have a queer student union. We have black student union. And we have Asian American Pacific Islanders club. So we have multiple clubs that kids can get involved in. And they can 
um, do after school. Uh, I think off the top of my head, there might be at least 15 or 20 uh, clubs that happen after school, including the four affinity groups. Um, I'm not sure if I could, yeah, I'm not sure if I'd be able to talk on behalf of what their mission is with respect to the student council itself. Uh, the student government class is the government class that puts on, like I said, all of the assemblies. And I know that their mission is, is that they organize all of the events where they bring the student body together. Uh, but they also do a variety of different things. We just had a big blood drive, so they organized a blood drive. Um, they're organizing right now because of the holiday season. Um, all fifth period classes are um, bringing in um, either money or items that we can donate to uh, families in need. So we do a lot of uh, charitable work as well as bringing the school together. Um, but I, I don't know if I could talk about their actual mission statement other than community. Talking about uh, American or Asian American Pacific Islanders Club, I went for um, a little bit, but I had to stop because of like work schedules, conflicts, and stuff like that. But um, the art like class or club was very interesting and it was really awesome. Uh, we we went to like um, we went to links to um, like. I don't know how to say this, um, connect with a bunch of different like Asian cultures and Asian like traditions and Hawaiian traditions. I'm native Hawaiian and stuff like that. So we really wanted to like connect with people and we did Diwali, Diwali and Holi. So we use, or we, um, get in touch with a lot of different traditions and stuff like that at the, um, clubs. Yeah. Um, so, um, the clubs are places for kids to, uh, be able to find, um, other things to do, but then there's also, uh, those affinity identity clubs, uh, where students can come together. And I know, uh, Savvy runs the Queer Student Union and it's very popular. Um, and our Ascension, our Latinx, uh, um, club is also very popular, um, and, so yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities definitely for students to get involved and uh, to be uh, amongst their other fellow peers. Do we have other questions? Yeah. Uh, I was curious about the, just the, maybe the limitations of, of like what classes MHS students can take in, in Ma and vice versa, because it sounds like the core classes, like the history, English, and such that, that are specific to Ma. And um, are MHS students allowed to take any of, of the classes at Ma? Or so other than the electives, no. It works the other way around. So the Ma students, so other than the electives, so the electives are blended. So like I said, in my art three, four class, if I have, I think I have roughly 32 kids. And of those 32 students, I'll just say 20 of them are Ma and the other 12 are Milwaukee High. So those classes are blended. PE is gonna be blended, um, choir is gonna be blended, drama is gonna be blended. Um, but when it comes to the academic classes, the Ma classes, the freshman Ma class or sophomore Ma class, they're going to be in a Ma history class. If, for instance, they wanted to take uh, an AP class or a Milwaukee High class, they are able to exit out of that class and take it. But it doesn't work necessarily the other way around. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't necessarily. We just have we just never get that. Uh, but I do know that Liv, you were just talking about this in the last panel about uh, your um, uh, blended English class. Yeah, um, I'm in a as so in your freshman year, it's all mock classes uh, except for your electives, which are blended. And as you go up in grade um with higher level like let's say math classes I'm currently in pre-calculus that's a mixed class it's not specifically a ma like only class because it's a higher level math class 
Um, our uh, AP Lit class that I'm also in is also mixed. Um, it's a lot of Ma students, but there is um, an advanced English 12 Ma class, though, uh, called Ma Poets and Playwrights um, that you can also take instead of uh, AP Literature as a 12th grader. Um, I'm not sure if this has been your experience as a senior here, but I know when I went here, I also took AP classes my junior and senior year, and I think the MHS teachers who teach the AP classes know that a lot of MAW students are interested in AP, and they are aware of that and try to integrate art in there as well. That was definitely my experience taking AP. There was some art still integrated into it. And I would just agree with Savvy that that has been my experience also. Uh, yeah. Well, you mentioned your class size of 32. Do you have like a rough average class size here for both MHS and? A rough average, I would say, is approximately 35. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just to go back to uh, what we were just talking about with the AP. So students will have access to all the AP classes. We also have a handful of teachers that are able to offer dual college credit, and dual college credit is aligned with CCC. So for instance, I can teach um, my advanced and AP art classes, as well as my advanced photography class. There are, my syllabus is aligned with uh, CCC's intro to drawing, intro to painting, intro to design, and intro to photography. So my students can walk out, and both Kai and Liv are going to walk out this year with 15 college credits. And that is huge. And that's not from Milwaukee High. That's from Clackamas Community College. And I know for a fact, uh, because my, my son is a senior uh, at college in New York City, and I really wish uh, that they were able to walk out with uh, 15 college credits because, um, you know, it would save me a lot of money, uh, without a doubt. Um, so we have that ability uh, with some of our classes uh, where teachers have been approved by CCC and their syllabus is aligned, and so students can walk out. I know that our AP history class is like that. I believe um, uh, and biology is like that. Um, Pre-Cal, so there's a handful of classes, uh, the arts, as I just said. Um, so students have a lot of opportunity here, as well as the AP credit. Uh, the good thing with the dual college credit that I will say, and I always say this to my students, is that that is actual CCC credit. So they are walking out with community college credits in their pocket. Um, AP is obviously give or take from the college if they want to accept it. And I've had students in the past that they've ended up getting a four or five in AP art, five being the highest. And their college said, well, we're only going to accept two of your classes of AP. And they were taking three. So they were taking art, biology, and pre-cal. And they ended up giving them their AP math and AP uh, science uh, credits instead so you know but the CCC credits are actual college credit in their pocket when they walk out did you want to say something about that just a quick add-on to the CCC credits it's only ten dollars a credit when you get them which is a big money saver so for only a hundred and fifty dollars I will be walking out of high school with 15 college credits which thousands. yeah thousands of dollars so it's an amazing opportunity that I'm very thankful I've had as a high school student. Any other questions? Well, if you don't have any more questions, we really do thank you. Uh, we appreciate you for coming this evening, and we look forward to hopefully welcoming uh, your kids, your students, into Ma next year. So thank you very much. Thank you.